William Averill Harriman November 15, 1891 to July 26, 1986, better known as Averill Harriman, was an American Democratic politician, businessman, and diplomat. The son of railroad baron E. H. Harriman, he served as Secretary of Commerce under President Harry S. Truman and later as the 48th Governor of New York. He was a candidate for the Democratic presidential nomination in 1952 and 1956, as well as a core member of the group of foreign policy elders known as the Wise Men. While attending Groton School and Yale University, he made contacts that led to creation of a banking firm that eventually merged into Brown Brothers Harriman & Co. He owned parts of various other companies, including Union Pacific Railroad, Merchant Shipping Corporation, and Polaroid Corporation. During the presidency of Franklin D. Roosevelt, Harriman served in the National Recovery Administration and on the Business Advisory Council before moving into foreign policy roles. After helping to coordinate the Lend-Lease program, Harriman served as the ambassador to the Soviet Union and attended the major World War II conferences. After the war, he became a prominent advocate of George F. Kennan's policy of containment. He also served as Secretary of Commerce, and coordinated the implementation of the Marshall Plan. In 1954, Harriman defeated Republican Senator Irving Ives to become the governor of New York. He served a single term before his defeat by Nelson Rockefeller in the 1958 election. Harriman unsuccessfully sought the presidential nomination at the 1952 Democratic National Convention and the 1956 Democratic National Convention. Though Harriman had Truman's backing at the 1956 convention, the Democrats nominated Adlai Stevenson too in both elections. After his gubernatorial defeat, Harriman became a widely respected foreign policy elder within the Democratic Party. He helped negotiate the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty during President John F. Kennedy's administration and was deeply involved in the Vietnam War during the Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson administrations. After Johnson left office in 1969, Harriman affiliated with various organizations, including the Club of Rome and the Council on Foreign Relations. Early life and education Better known as Averill Harriman, he was born in New York City, the son of railroad baron Edward Henry Harriman and Mary Williamson Averill. He was the brother of E. Roland Harriman and Mary Harriman Rumsey. Harriman was a close friend of Hall Roosevelt, the brother of Eleanor Roosevelt. During the summer of 1899, Harriman's father organized the Harriman Alaska Expedition, a philanthropic scientific survey of coastal Alaska and Russia that attracted 25 of the leading scientific, naturalist, and artist luminaries of the day, including John Muir, John Burroughs, George Bird Grinnell, C. Hart Miriam, Grove Carl Gilbert, and Edward Curtis, along with 100 family members and staff, aboard the steamship George Elder. Young Harriman would have his first introduction to Russia, a nation on which he would spend a significant amount of attention in his later life in public service. He attended Groton School in Massachusetts before going on to Yale where he joined the Skull and Bones Society. He graduated in 1913. After graduating, he inherited one of the largest fortunes in America and became Yale's youngest crew coach. Career Topic Business affairs Using money from his father he established W.A. Harriman & Co. banking business in 1922. In 1927 his brother Roland joined the business and the name was changed to Harriman Brothers & Company. In 1931, it merged with Brown Bros & Co. to create the highly successful Wall Street firm Brown Brothers Harriman & Co. Notable employees included George Herbert Walker and his son-in-law Prescott Bush. Harriman's main properties included Brown Brothers and Harriman & Co., Union Pacific Railroad, Merchant Shipbuilding Corporation, and venture capital investments that included the Polaroid Corporation. Harriman's associated properties included the Southern Pacific Railroad including the Central Pacific Railroad, Illinois Central Railroad, Wells Fargo & Co., the Pacific Mail Steamship Co., American Ship & Commerce, Hamburg Amerikanische Packetfahrt Aktiengesellschaft, Haypag, the American Hawaiian Steamship Co., United American Lines, the Guarantee Trust Company, and the Union Banking Corporation. He served as chairman of the Business Council, then known as the Business Advisory Council for the United States Department of Commerce in 1937 and 1939. 
Topic: Politics. Harriman's older sister, Mary Rumsey, encouraged Averill to leave his finance job and work with her and their friends, the Roosevelts, to advance the goals of the New Deal. Averill joined the NRA National Recovery Administration, the first government consumer rights group, marking the beginning of his political career. Thoroughbred <inaudible> <inaudible> racing <inaudible> 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 Following the death of August Belmont, Jr., in 1924 Harriman, George Walker, and Joseph E. Whittiner purchased much of Belmont's thoroughbred breeding stock. Harriman raced under the nom de course of Arden Farm. Among his horses, Chance Play won the 1927 Jockey Club Gold Cup. He also raced in partnership with Walker under the name Log Cabin Stable before buying him out. U.S. Racing Hall of Fame inductee Louis Foistel, trainer of Man O' War, trained the log cabin horses until 1926. Of the partnership's successful runners purchased from the August Belmont estate, Ladkin is best remembered for defeating the European star Apinard in the International Special. <laughs> <laughs> War seizures controversy Harriman's banking business was the main Wall Street connection for German companies and the varied U.S. financial interests of Fritz Thyssen, who was a financial backer of the Nazi Party until 1938. The Trading with the Enemy Act enacted on October 6, 1917 classified any business transactions for profit with enemy nations as illegal, and any funds or assets involved were subject to seizure by the U.S. government. The declaration of war on the U.S. by Hitler led to the U.S. government order on October 20, 1942 to seize German interests in the U.S. which included Harriman's operations in New York City. The Harriman business interests seized under the act in October and November 1942 included Union Banking Corporation UBC from Thyssen and Brown Brothers Harriman Holland American Trading Corporation from Harriman Seamless Steel Equipment Corporation from Harriman Silesian American Corporation This company was partially owned by a German entity. During the war the Germans tried to take full control of Silesian American. In response to that, the American government seized German-owned minority shares in the company, leaving the U.S. partners to carry on the portion of the business in the United States. The assets were held by the government for the duration of the war, then returned afterward. UBC was dissolved in 1951. Compensation for wartime losses in Poland were based on pre-war assets. Harriman, who owned vast coal reserves in Poland, was handsomely compensated for them through an agreement between the American and Polish governments. Poles who had owned little but their homes received negligible sums. <laughs> <laughs> World War II diplomacy Beginning in the spring of 1941, Harriman served President Franklin D. Roosevelt as a special envoy to Europe and helped coordinate the Lend-Lease program. He was present at the meeting between FDR and Winston Churchill at Placentia Bay, in August 1941, which yielded the Atlantic Charter. It was a common declaration of principles of the United States and the UK, it was eventually endorsed by all of the Allies. Harriman was subsequently dispatched to Moscow to negotiate the terms of the Lend-Lease Agreement with the Soviet Union. His promise of $1 billion in aid technically exceeded his brief. Determined to win over the doubtful American public, he used his own funds to purchase time on CBS radio to explain the program in terms of enlightened self-interest. This skepticism lifted with the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, on November 25, 1941 12 days before the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, he noted that, "...the United States Navy is shooting the Germans... German submarines and aircraft at sea." In the summer of 1942, Harriman accompanied Churchill to the Moscow Conference to explain to Stalin why the Western Allies were carrying out operations in North Africa instead of opening the promised Second Front in France. Harriman was appointed as United States Ambassador to the Soviet Union in 1943. At the Tehran Conference in late 1943, Harriman was tasked with placating a suspicious Churchill while Roosevelt attempted to gain the confidence of Stalin. The conference highlighted the divisions between the United States and Britain about the post war world. 
Churchill was intent on maintaining Britain's empire and carving the post-war world into spheres of influence while the United States upheld the principles of self-determination as laid out in the Atlantic Charter. Harriman mistrusted the Soviet leaders' motives and intentions and opposed the Spheres approach as it would give Stalin a free hand in Eastern Europe. Harriman also attended the Yalta Conference, where he encouraged taking a stronger line with the Soviet Union especially on questions of Poland. After Roosevelt's death, he attended the final Big Three conference at Potsdam. Although the new president, Harry Truman, was receptive to Harriman's anti-Soviet hard-line advice, the new Secretary of State, James Burns, managed to sideline him. While in Berlin, he noted the tight security imposed by Soviet military authorities and the beginnings of a program of reparations by which the Soviets were stripping out German industry. In 1945, while ambassador to the Soviet Union, Harriman was presented with a Trojan horse gift. In 1952, the gift, a carved wood great seal of the United States, which had adorned the ambassador's Moscow residential office in Spasso House, was found to be bugged. Topic: <laughs> Statesman of Foreign and Domestic Affairs. Harriman served as ambassador to the Soviet Union until January 1946. When he returned to the United States, he worked hard to get George Kennan's long telegram into wide distribution. Kennan's analysis, which generally lined up with Harriman's, became the cornerstone of Truman's Cold War strategy of containment. From April to October 1946, he was ambassador to Britain, but he was soon appointed to become United States Secretary of Commerce under President Harry S. Truman to replace Henry A. Wallace, a critic of Truman's foreign policies. In 1948, he was put in charge of the Marshall Plan. In Paris, he became friendly with the CIA agent Irving Brown, who organized anti-communist unions and organizations. Harriman was then sent to Tehran in July 1951 to mediate between Iran and Britain in the wake of the Iranian nationalization of the Anglo Iranian Oil Company. In the 1954 race to succeed Republican Thomas E. Dewey as governor of New York, Harriman defeated Dewey's protege, U.S. Senator Irving M. Ives, by a tiny margin. He served as governor for one term until Republican Nelson Rockefeller unseated him in 1958. As governor, he increased personal taxes by 11% but his tenure was dominated by his presidential ambitions. Harriman was a candidate for the Democratic presidential nomination in 1952, and again in 1956 when he was endorsed by Truman but lost both times to Illinois Governor Adlai Stevenson. Despite the failure of his presidential ambitions, Harriman became a widely respected elder statesman of the party. In January 1961, he was appointed ambassador at large in the Kennedy administration, a position he held until November, when he became Assistant Secretary of State for Far Eastern Affairs. In 1961, at the suggestion of Ambassador Charles W. Yost Harriman represented President Kennedy at the funeral of King Mohammed V of Morocco. During this period he advocated U.S. support of a neutral government in Laos and helped to negotiate the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty in 1963. In December 1961, Anatoly Golitsyn defected from the Soviet Union and accused Harriman of being a Soviet spy, but his claims were dismissed by the CIA and Harriman remained in his position until April 1963, when he became Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs. He retained that position during the transition to the Johnson administration until March 1965 when he again became ambassador at large. He held that position for the remainder of Johnson's presidency. Harriman headed the U.S. delegation to the preliminary peace talks in Paris between the United States and North Vietnam 1968-69. Vietnamese coup d'état President-elect Kennedy appointed Harriman as ambassador-at-large, to operate with the full confidence of the president and an intimate knowledge of all aspects of United States policy. But by 1963, Kennedy had come to suspect the loyalty of certain members on his national security team. According to Colonel William Corson, USMC, by 1963 Harriman was running Vietnam without consulting the president or the attorney general. Corson said Kenny O'Donnell, JFK's appointments secretary, was convinced that the national security adviser, McGeorge Bundy, followed the orders of Harriman rather than the president. 
Corson also claimed that O'Donnell was particularly concerned about Michael Forrestal, a young White House staffer who handled liaison on Vietnam with Harriman. Harriman certainly supported the coup against the South Vietnam President Go Dinh Diem in 1963. However, it is alleged that the orders that ended in the deaths of Diem and his brother actually originated with Harriman and were carried out by Henry Cabot Lodge Jr.'s military assistant. The fundamental question about the murders was the sudden and unusual recall of Saigon Station Chief John Jocko Richardson by an unknown authority. Special Operations Army Officer, John Michael Dunn, was sent to Vietnam in his stead. He followed the orders of Harriman and Forrestal rather than the CIA. According to Corson, Dunn's role in the incident has never been made public but he was assigned to Ambassador Lodge for special operations with the authority to act without hindrance, and he was known to have access to the coup plotters. Corson speculated that with Richardson recalled the way was clear for Dunn to freely act. <laughs> Later years Harriman received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, with distinction, in 1969 and West Point Sylvanus Thayer Award in 1975. Furthermore, in 1983 he received the Freedom Medal. In 1973 he was interviewed in the now-famous TV documentary series, The World at War, where he gives a recollection of his experiences as Roosevelt's personal representative in Britain along with his views on Cold War politics, in particular Poland and the Warsaw Pact, along with the exchanges he witnessed between Winston Churchill, Franklin Roosevelt, and Joseph Stalin. In one such recollection, he describes Stalin as utterly cruel. Harriman was appointed senior member of the U.S. delegation to the United Nations General Assembly's special session on disarmament in 1978. He was also a member of the American Academy of Diplomacy Charter, Club of Rome, Council on Foreign Relations, Knights of Pythias, Skull and Bone Society, Psi Upsilon Fraternity, and the Jupiter Island Club. Topic personal life His first marriage, two years after graduating from Yale, was to Kitty Lanier Lawrence. Lawrence was the great-granddaughter of James Lanier, a co-founder of Winslow, Lanier & Co., and the granddaughter of Charles D. Lanier 1837-1926, a close friend of Pierpont Morgan before their divorce in 1928, and her death in 1936. Harriman and Lawrence had two daughters together, Mary Averill Harriman 1917-1996, who married Dr. Shirley C. Fisk Kathleen Lanier Harriman 1917-2011, who married Stanley Grafton Mortimer, Jr. 1913 to 1999 who had previously been married to socialite Babe Paley 1915 to 1978 about a year after his divorce from Lawrence he married Marie Norton Whitney 1903 to 1970 who had left her husband Cornelius Vanderbilt Whitney to marry him on their honeymoon in Europe they purchased oil paintings by Van Gogh Degas Cézanne Picasso and Renoir she and her husband later donated many of the works she bought and collected, including those of the artist Walt Kuhn, to the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. They remained married until her death on September 26, 1970, at George Washington University Hospital in Washington, D.C. In 1971, he married for the third and final time to Pamela Beryl Digby Churchill Hayward 1920-1997, the former wife of Winston Churchill's son Randolph, and widow of Broadway producer Leland Hayward. Harriman and Pamela Churchill had had an affair during the war in 1941 which led to the breakdown of her marriage to Randolph Churchill. In 1993, she became the 58th United States Ambassador to France. Harriman died on July 26, 1986, in Yorktown Heights, New York, at the age of 94. Averill and Pamela Harriman are buried at the Arden Farm Graveyard in Arden, New York. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Legacy and Honors. The Harriman Hall at Stony Brook University was named in his honor. The W. Averill Harriman State Office Building Campus in Albany, New York also carries his name. Harriman State Park Idaho for the state park in New York named after his parents, see Harriman State Park New York. Harriman State Park is a state park in eastern Idaho, United States. It is located on an 11,000-acre wildlife refuge in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem and is home to an abundance of elk, moose, sandhill cranes, trumpeter swans, and the occasional black or grizzly bear. 
Two-thirds of the trumpeter swans that winter in the contiguous United States spend the season in Harriman State Park. The land was deeded to Idaho for free in 1977 by Roland and W. Averill Harriman, whose insistence that the state have a professional park managing service helped prompt the creation of the Idaho Department of Parks and Recreation in 1965. The park opened to the public in 1982. It is located in Fremont County, 3 miles kilometers south of Island Park, Idaho. Henry's Fork, a fly fishing stream, winds through the meadows of Harriman State Park. In winter, many of its roads and trails are groomed for cross-country skiing. Topic summary of Career Vice President, Union Pacific Railroad Co., 1915-17 Director, Illinois Central Railroad Co., 1915-46 Member, Palisades Interstate Park Commission, 1915-54 Chairman, Merchant Shipbuilding Corp., 1917-25 Chairman, W. A. Harriman & Company, 1920-31 Partner, Soviet Georgian Manganese Concessions, 1925-28 Chairman, Executive Committee, Illinois Central Central Railroad, 1931-42 Senior Partner, Brown Brothers Harriman & Co., 1931-46 Chairman, Union Pacific Railroad, 1932-46 Co-Founder, Today Magazine with Vincent Astor, 1935-37 Merged with Newsweek in 1937 Administrator and Special Assistant, National Recovery Administration, 1934-35 Founder, Sun Valley Ski Resort, Idaho, 1936 Chairman, Business Advisory Council, 1937-39 Chief, Materials Branch and Production Division, Office of Production Management, 1941 U.S. Ambassador and Special Representative to the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, 1941-43 Chairman, Ambassador and Special Representative of the U.S. President's Special Mission to the USSR, 1941-43 U.S. Ambassador to the USSR, 1943-46 U.S. Ambassador, Britain, 1946 U.S. U.S. Secretary of Commerce, 1946-48 United States Coordinator, European Recovery Program Marshall Plan, 1948-50 Special Assistant to the U.S. President, 1950-52 U.S. Representative and Chairman, North Atlantic Commission on Defense Plans, 1951-52 Director, Mutual Security Agency, 1951-53 Candidate, Democratic Nomination for U.S. President, 1952 Governor, State of New York, York, 1955-59 Candidate, Democratic nomination for U.S. President, 1956 U.S. Ambassador at Large, 1961 United States Deputy Representative, International Conference on the Settlement of the Laotian, 1961-62 Assistant U.S. Secretary of State, Far Eastern Affairs, 1961-63 Special Representative to the U.S. President, Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, 1963 Under Secretary of State, Political Affairs, 1963-65 U.S. Ambassador at Large, 1965-69 Chairman, President's Commission of the Observance of Human Rights Year, 1968 Personal Representative of the U.S. President, Peace Talks with North Vietnam, 1968-69 Chairman, Foreign Policy Task Force, Democratic National Committee, 1976 See also Florence Joffrey Harriman U.S. Presidential Election, 1952 U.S. Presidential Election, 1956